Today we will start a course for Excel. We will start with a brief description of the Excel environment. Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet application. It is used to monitor... Shouldn't we begin with how to launch Excel? Yeah, why not? If we want to open the Microsoft Excel application, we click the Start menu. If we don't have Excel pinned as it is here, we we'll click on the All Apps button and then on Excel. And here is the Excel home screen. Of course, to make the rest of the lesson easier to understand, we will need an Excel sheet with some data on it. So, on our screen we can see the computer sales per month for these three companies. The cell here displays the total of sales for January. At the top of the window, we can see the title bar, displaying the name of the application and the name of the book. Excel creates books in the same way that the Word creates documents. So, the book we are working on is named sales.xlsx because Excel saves files with a .xlsx extension. Earlier Excel versions, such as Excel 2003, used the .xls extension. This is the 2021 uh, version, right? Yes, yes, indeed. Okay. So, um, every book is composed of worksheets. This particular workbook contains the sales, chart and the sheet 3 worksheet. We can insert uh, more worksheets or uh, remove some of them. Right underneath the title bar, we can see the ribbon, which is organized in tabs. Each tab contains groups of commands. On the upper left cor corner, we can find the file tab. Right above it, we can find some more icons. Below the ribbon, we can find the formula bar, this one. We will see what it's used for in a while. Let's take a look at the workbook. It is composed of columns. We can see column A, B, C, etc. Older Excel versions offered 256 columns, whereas since the 2007 version, there are 16,384 available columns. Apart from columns, Excel also contains rows. This is the first one, the second one, the third row, etc. Older Excel versions offered 65,536 rows in total, whereas since its 2007 version, Excel offers 1,048,576 rows. Wow, that's more than a million rows. Too many. A uh, very useful uh, feature for managing large files. Yes, very useful for large uh, data. So, the areas where columns and rows cross are called cells. For example, this is a cell B4. B from the letter of the column and 4 from the number of the line. The B4 cell reference is displayed in here. If we click the cell here, we can see it's cell J17. And uh, this one is cell B9. Keep in mind that cell references use Latin characters only. The Excel mouse pointer can take several forms. Its form depends on the area where it is placed in. If we bring it uh, to a column heading, it looks like an arrow. By clicking here, we can select the entire column. If we bring the mouse pointer in column G and drag it to the right, holding the left mouse button down, we can select more than one column. If we bring it on a row number, and click it, this row will be selected. Likewise, if we drag uh, downwards or upwards, 
holding the left mouse button down, one or more rows will be selected. When the mouse pointer is placed between two columns, it takes the form of a double arrow. If we click once, we can drag the grid line to the right or to the left and change the column width. The same applies for the row height. We bring the mouse pointer between the third and the fourth row and holding the left mouse button down, we drag downwards or upwards. This is more or less how we can adjust the various columns and rows to the dim dimensions we want to. Let's take a look at the cells. If we want to select a cell, all we have to do is click on it. So we've just selected cell E12. We can see there is a function in the formula bar. This formula determines the result in this particular cell. If we want to click on an icon, the pointer takes this form. It also takes the same form if we want to select another worksheet. We're on the chart worksheet right now, and uh, now on the sales worksheet. So let's select cell um, I12. If we bring the mouse pointer to its border, it takes the form of a cross. If we hold the left mouse button down and drag to a different position, the contents of the cell will be moved. The mouse pointer will also take another form as soon as we bring it to the bottom right angle of the cell. It will then take the form of a small thin cross. If we bring the mouse pointer to the formula bar, it will take the form of the insertion point. You can then click inside the formula bar. The mouse pointer is uh, flickering at this point here, so we can uh, correct the formula if we want. This concludes our brief description of the Excel environment.